In the previous sections, we talked about message construction and audience activity. We saw that people, contrary to the traditional mass audience paradigm, are actually quite adept at selecting the messages they want to process, both on a conscious level, by selecting specific media for consumption, and on an unconscious level, because of cognitive shortcuts. We all have our own shortcuts or filters based on our personal background, experiences, interests, etc. But studies also suggest different ways in which our cognitive shortcuts are actually influenced by mass media. So maybe in some ways our filters are not so personal and unique after all. Some messages, for instance, go through our filter because the media tell us that they are important, that we should concern ourselves with them and form some sort of opinion on them. Last week I discussed the agenda setting theory, which proposes exactly this. The media don't tell us what to think, but they do influence what we think about. McCombs and Shaw asked people in their study of the 1968 presidential election in the United States what the most important election issues were. Interestingly enough, the results corresponded to a large degree with the amount of attention these items were given by the local and national news. Of course, we could assume that news professionals were keen observers of public opinion, and therefore the news media serve as a mirror of the public agenda. But McCombs and Shaw suggested the exact opposite, that the amount of media attention influenced the public agenda. They call this theory agenda setting. And the idea in its simplest form is that media tell us which news events are important, who important people are, and where important things happen. It is usually used in relation to the news, but can also be used in other ways. Since the 70s, many studies have added to our knowledge of agenda setting. One important later addition to the theory is the concept of priming. Scholars noticed that people, when asked to evaluate political candidates, use the criteria that the media give attention to. This is called priming, and I will explain. If the media would give a lot of attention to, let's say, the near extinction of pandas, then people are primed to connect this item with their evaluation of political candidates. So basically, they will start their evaluation with asking, what is politician X's view on panda extinction? And how does he or she plan to battle it? If the media give a lot of attention to something else, like the economy, then people will link this to their evaluation. A movie review can also prime the potential audience. If the review goes on and on about the special effects of a movie, then the audience is more likely to include the special effects in their evaluation process. But if the review focuses more on the storyline, then the audience is primed to pay attention to that. Well, you can probably see how this is an addition to agenda setting. The media don't persuade people to think this or that, but they do influence what people think about when evaluating. Of course, some items won't receive any media attention at all. This has become a separate field of study within communication science, called gatekeeping. It is, simply put, the study of how the filtering process of the media works. Gatekeeping theory addresses the question why some items are let through the gate while others are filtered out. Finally, media professionals who can make the decision to admit topics through the gate, or keep them from the media agenda, are called gatekeepers. So, before messages can reach our own personal filter, they're first filtered by gatekeepers in the media. If you think about it, it's a miracle that messages reach us at all.